I believe that identity is everything. Knowing who you are is the key to a life well lived. But your identity is not something that you create or imagine or even invent. Your identity is a gift. It is created for you. And when you discover it and you receive your truest identity, the challenge of your life is to rise to the call of it. Many of us believe lies about our value and worth. And the way we fill in the blank, I am blank, is actually the most important blank we ever fill in. Who are you? Who are you created to be? Who do you want to be? And so many times we fill in that blank with a negative. I am not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not smart enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not successful enough. I will never be enough of who they want me to be. So we believe these lies about our worth and we fill in those blanks with a negative. I know what this is. When I was a little girl, I was klutzy. That was the blank. <laughs> that was filled in. I was clumsy, not athletic, not very talented at anything. And my mom was worried that I was going to slouch and hide, hide my height. And so she found this local modeling school that had a class and hoping to get me some grace. And it was there in my modeling class where I learned to stand up straight and pose for the camera. And they really would put a telephone book on your head and have you <laughs> practice walking. When I graduated from that little school, they named me most photogenic, which basically means I always looked better in pictures than I did in real life, which is the case for a lot of your Instagram pages. But they named me most potential model, and they gave me this trophy. And I remember walking across the stage as a kid and you know, receiving this trophy and thinking, I don't even know what the word potential means. And I went home and I looked it up in the dictionary and it means most likely to be. So that was the blank. I would be a model. That's who I was. It became my identity. So at 17 years old, I signed with a Hollywood agency and they sent me over to Europe, uh, kind of like sending a girl out into sea of sharks just to see if she's going to swim. And I lived with all these models in these models' apartments as a young woman. Went to, I lived in five different countries, and I, I would see the way that the girls picked apart all their flaws, and the way that they analyzed their reflection in the mirror, and they were never satisfied. I saw the way that many of the designers and photographers in the business treated the girls. I saw the fact that they treated us like we were not very worthy of their respect sometimes and the way that they would sometimes demean us and make us feel like we were just things in a world of things. You know, the word for model is les mannequins in French. You're a mannequin. You're just plastic. And when they're done with you, they can ship you off and get a new mannequin. Well, I lived with girls with eating disorders, I saw the way that many of them hated their flaws and they filled in those blanks with negatives. And I didn't ever think that that would be me. But at 21, 22 years old, I began doing the runway for Giorgio Armani. And to do that, I had to starve myself. I had to stop eating to measure up to that standard of perfection that the business put on all of us. I remember being on that stage and it looking like so glamorous, you know, the paparazzi, the limousines, everything. 
and then going backstage and looking around at all the girls and seeing that many of us believed that lie that we were plastic. You could see all the bones, all the ribs down their backs, just skeletal. And you could see the way that they would look in the mirror and try to get the attention of, of the camera. And it felt in that moment so hollow for me, like I wanted more. I wanted love in my life. I wanted a purpose beyond what I saw in the mirror. I was just like you. I wanted love. I wanted value. I, I had dreams. I wanted a family. I wanted an identity that was not based on appearance. An identity and a purpose that was really going to last. And I knew I would never do it again. But you know, I believed that I was a model, and so that was the only road I'd ever known. And I kept walking down that road, even when it got darker and darker. Lonely, depressed, afraid, alone. Feeling like I didn't have a voice, that I couldn't speak up about the way that sometimes they demeaned the girls and how I myself felt demeaned. I was afraid to talk about it. I was afraid to say what really goes on in Hollywood. And I knew it. But I didn't know how to speak up. And one day, I was walking down the street in Germany, where I was working, and I ran into this man on the street, this older gentleman, and he realized I was modeling over there, and he began to say to me things like, you know, you can't sell your face like I was priceless. And he told me, you should not go to them so that they can use you like you're a piece of furniture. This is disgusting, he told me. And no one had ever told me that. He said, you can't sell beauty. You cannot sell your face. Turn around now, go back, go back the way you came, back to America where you belong. You will no longer go to them, he said to me, but someday they will come to you. Many will come to you to hear what you have to say. That day he gave me a voice. He gave me my truest identity and it was like he gave me a gift. I turned around that day. I never took another picture for money again. First thing I did is I went to a little kiosk, the corner stores in Europe, bought myself some Snickers bars. I'm like, if I'm not gonna model, I'm gonna eat. And I'm gonna enjoy my life. <laughs> and I will eat a lot heartily after this talk. He gave me a gift that I had a voice and that I could speak up and that I could help women and girls with the things that I saw, and also that I had value. I went back to school, I got my master's degree, and wrote a book to help girls, and it went all over the world. And in the last 20 years of listening to their stories and speaking to them, I found that so many girls believe lies about their value. Someone told them once, you are ugly, and they believe it. I was told that. I know what that is. And you start believing this lie, I'm ugly, and ugly means hated in German. Or one girl told me that her father told her that she was a disappointment right before he left. Instead of telling her she had a destiny, he told her she was a disappointment, and she believed that lie. The way we fill in the blanks is everything. But for us to stop believing a lie about our value, first we have to know it's a lie. We have to say, I'm not weak, I'm, I'm wonderful. <laughs> I'm not a disappointment, I have a destiny. I'm not ugly, I'm beautiful, it's who I am. 
and then we begin to live out that truth. People don't just believe lies, they live them out. And that's how we end up with girls with all this body image and self-image and poor self-worth. Somewhere along, they believed a lie about their value. And then once we realize it's a lie, we have to replace it with the truth of we, who we are truly created to be. So the lie for me was that I had no voice and my husband, the cowboy, he gave me a voice. He told me, Jen, go speak to girls. Jen, write your book. And one time he told me, Jen, I want you to talk about everything that hurt in, in your past until it doesn't hurt anymore. He gave me the gift of using my voice. And the more I shared my story and I talked about how I truly felt and the things I saw behind the scenes, the more I began to heal. And in the beginning, I was angry. I was very angry at Hollywood, at magazines, at people. And I was very hurt. But over time, I realized I'm not angry anymore. I'm able to speak the truth with compassion and with kindness and without fear. You know, in 2017, the most often looked up word in the dictionary is feminism. I think the whole world right now is asking the question, what is it to be feminine? What is it to be a woman? In 2017, also on Washington, D.C., a woman stood up and she read a poem. It was called, I Am a Nasty Woman. I think we have to be careful because the younger girls are watching us. Is that how we want to fill in the blank of who we are as women? Or do we want to fill in the blank with the positives of who we are? Because we're not nasty, we're noble, we're not angry, we're able. And there are so many capable and able women right now on the screen. But there's also a lot of angry women too. And I believe that we can call the daughters to the voice of true womanhood in all its beauty and all its value. And so I also wrote a poem about the value of women. The first one is called, I am a woman. I am beautiful. I am bold. I am brilliant. I am bright. I am young. I am old. I am loved. I am light. I am gentle. I am kind. I am compassion, and I care. I am daring. I am divine. I am devoted to you in prayer. I am fearless. I am faithful. I am tried, and I am true. I am generous. I am graceful, and I will forever love you. I am from the land of the brave and the home of the free. And this is the woman I choose to be. I am a wife to but one man. I am fashioned by God's hand. I am his complement, his companion, his lover, and his life. I'm the breath in his bones. I refuse division and strife. I will stand in the shallows, on the peaks, in the streams. I will love till last breath this man of my dreams. He is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I get behind him 
till the day of his death. On my wedding day, I made my vows. That was then, this is now. In the valley of the shadows, I will be his better half. I will hold his hand, and at the future, I will laugh. I am gentle grace, the softness at his side. I will lift my face and serve him like a bride. I am a mother. I nurture, I model, I give, I guide. I prepare the food and the table and keep my home open wide. I am humble, I am stable, I am dignified, I am blessed, I am released. I won't blame, whine, complain. I have purpose, I have peace, I know what beauty looks like. You can't see it in a mirror. I am gratitude, I am helpful to my here. I am a healer, a servant, I'm the fragrance of the world. I'm not oppressed, not imprisoned. I'll be an example to the girls. I'm a friend. I will come along when you are hurt, scared, grieved, alone, and make your heart my home. I'm a friend. When joy bounds, I come around. When hearts break, I have no fear. I know the stakes. I am near. I know your joys and your sorrows. I will be here today, be here tomorrow. When you are up, down, weak, worn, I am with you in this storm. The answer to the question, who I am, is the answer to everything. And so together we can say, I'm not angry. I am able. I'm not bitter. I am beautiful. I'm not cantankerous, I am courageous. I'm not demeaning, I am devoted. I'm not excusing bad behavior. I am excellent in all that I do. I'm not fearful, I am faithful. I'm not gloating, I am grateful. I'm not hateful, I am hopeful. I'm not idiotic, I am impressive. I'm not just my job, I am joy. I'm not crushing you with criticism. I'm calling for kindness. I'm not loud, I am loving. I'm not mean, I am meaningful. I am not nasty, I am noble. I'm not honorary, I'm honoring. I'm not prideful, I'm purposeful. I'm not quick to judge, I'm a queen of mercy. I'm not religious, I am righteous. I'm not sassy, I am steadfast. I'm not treacherous, I'm telling the truth in love. I am not undone. I am unstoppable. I'm not a victim. I'm virtuous. I'm not weak. I am wonderful. I'm not X-rated. I'm exceptional. I'm not yelling, I'm yielding. I'm not jealous, I'm zealous for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our identity is a gift. We decide how to fill in those blanks. And when you receive your truest identity of who you are created to be, it is the challenge of your life to then rise to the call of it. Thank you.